to the fourth week of Illustrated Ministries, The Beatitudes. This week, our lesson is called, Blessed Are Those Who Mourn. As we start today, I want you to think about these questions. What is something that makes you laugh? And what is something that makes you cry? You can stop the video to take a few minutes to discuss these questions with your family. Today, we'll join a huge crowd of people following Jesus. He sees their hurts and pains and cares for them in many ways. He leads them to a mountain. Let's climb the mountain. There are many ways to climb. Remember that you can hike, use ropes, you can roll using a hiking wheelchair, or you can climb using your arms and legs. Pick a way to move up the mountain. Ready, set, let's climb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Phew, we made it. Let's find a seat and settle our bodies. In your imagination, let's look around at all that we can see. In Jesus' time, people believed mountains were holy and special places to be with God. Maybe because they reached up high into the sky. Let's reach up high into the sky using our arms. Jesus told them about God's kingdom on this mountain. You can think of a kingdom as the way the world works or is set up. In God's kingdom, there is an abundance. More than enough honor, food, money, love, power, and resources for every child of God to thrive. Today, we're going to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. And Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There were people in Jesus' time, just like today, who were taught crying was a shameful thing to do, that mourning showed weakness and was too vulnerable. Many of the rich and powerful people spent their time trying not to cry. They focused on gathering money and control to feel strong and unshakable. In this promise, Jesus speaks to people who mourn or cry and praises them. Why do you think he did this? You can stop the video to discuss this question with your family. I bet everyone here has cried before. I have. Why do you think people cry? Crying shows we are alive, awake, aware. Crying shows we are brave. Crying shows we are willing to feel pain, our own and someone else's pain. You're not trying to block the pain around you or keep your distance from it. Tears and crying are important, especially when what makes us cry is painful or hard to hold. It's also a beautiful way we connect with God. Did you know God cries too and that Jesus cried during this time on earth? God cries for everyone. God's heart is wide and holds all the pain of everyone's hurts throughout the whole world. And when we cry, it's a way of sharing in God's heart. Jesus promises, Jesus has promised here that God will comfort us when we cry, and Jesus promised God would bring comfort and make things right for all people listening who couldn't provide for their needs no matter how hard they tried, were told they didn't belong because of who they were or what they'd done, and struggled because of the way the world is set up to harm them, which caused them to cry and grieve. One way God comforts is through you. Hold your hands up like this. When you offer your hands or loving words, especially to someone who is sad, you're God's comfort to that person. Crying together and being vulnerable helps us belong with each other, and it brings us close to God. Before we transition to our next activity, I would like to bless you. Remember, a blessing is something you receive, so open your hands when you're ready, like you're ready to receive a gift. I will speak the blessing. If you receive it, take the blessing and put it in your heart. May God bless you when you laugh and when you cry. God understands all of your feelings. Now, let's take out our handout for this week. It looks like this. I have some questions for you to think about. Share about a time when you cried. What happened? How did you feel after you cried? How can you be God's comfort to someone this week? You can pause the video to discuss these questions with your family. Now that we've discussed our questions for the week, here's our activity for today. How do you comfort a friend who's sad? Some people send messages or cards to encourage their friends who are sad. To make the card, you'll need this handout. Turn the page over so the design is facing down on your surface. Fold the paper in half by bringing the top edge to the bottom edge. Then fold the left edge over to meet the right edge. It should be blank inside when you open the card like this. Complete the printable card with a word of encouragement. 
The front of the card says, when you're feeling sad, remember, and on the inside, write your own words of comfort. Here are a few sample choices. God hears your prayer. Everyone feels sad sometimes. Someday you will feel better, and I will always be here for you. If you don't have a handout, that's okay. You can use a blank piece of paper and create your own card to send to someone who might need a little bit of cheering up. Once you're finished with your card, you can drop it off at a friend's house or mail it to someone. And now it's time to end with a prayer. Comforting God, thank you for our tears and how they teach us, free us, and connect us to you. Thank you for holding the pain that makes us cry and for crying with us. Please use us to be your comfort to someone this week. Amen. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you again next week. Bye.